All right, I think we are now live. Welcome to episode 55 of Menace and the Man. Stan the Man, Dennis the Menace Bermudez. Whoop, whoop. How are you today, Dennis? Ah, uh, groovy, baby, yeah. Still living? Yep, still alive. That's what's up. Still kicking, you know? All right, let me just share this quick, and then we'll get right into uh, Lyman Good and Shane Berger. What are you sharing, Stan? The, the episode. What you talk about, Willis? And I want to like it wasn't letting me type for some reason. The computer was uh going crazy on me. Would you say that your computer illiterate? Mm, I'm working on it. You know, I take like speech, if you will. <laughs> if you do good, you get like one pretzel. Yeah, I uh, work on it. It's tough though, man. Can it's... we talk about what like when you're like kind of hungry or there's no food around and someone gives you one single pretzel? How delicious that one pretzel is. Yeah. Or am I my own? No, oh, no. If someone gave thing. you a bag of pretzels, you're like, oh, thanks. That's a real thing. But one fucking pretzel? That's a real thing. You like savor it. You fucking get it like soggy in your mouth. It's so good. It tastes better than a bag of pretzels. When you're hungry, of course. But then that one pretzel is like makes you thirsty even. Who wants one pretzel? You, need, you always need a beverage with pretzels now. Um, I'm talking about like not a fucking big doughy pretzel. I'm talking about a hard yeah, a little one little individual pretzel. Yes. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, one so one one <laughs> little one little pretzel will dry your little mouth up. Yeah, <laughs> it wouldn't you? No, because right. that's why I feel like one pretzel is way more delicious than a bag of pretzels. Because Halfway through the bag of pretzels, then your mouth gets kind of dried up, and you're like, all right, man, I want to just cut to the chase and get to the, the end of this pretzel. You're a better man than me when it comes to pretzel eating. What do you want me to say? I want you to say it again. <laughs> <laughs> you're a better man than me when it comes to pretzel eating. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. All right, so let's uh, let's see if this works real quick here. What? Uh, the computer stuff? What would you say? The computer stuff? Yeah. We're going to try to do a little group chat. Okay. Like, um, are both are, are Shane and Lyman in the same room? No. Different spots. Oh, yeah. wow. What's up, guy? Can you see me? Uh, yep, now we got Boom. you. Boom. Cool. Wow, this is wild. <laughs> we, uh, <laughs> Menace the Man's trying to do things these days. I, I think we just lost Lyman. We had him for a second, but then he just went off. Uh. Stan, have you ever tried to do like a group no, this Skype on your phone? No. It never no, works out. It never works out? Yeah. I've had, it, I've had it work like once. I've had no, I've had group FaceTimes work. I never I tried a group Skype. Oh, I'm talking about FaceTimes. No. But Shane Burgos, welcome oh. to Menace and the Man. What's up, Rob? What's up? Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, first oh. time we've ever had you on the show. We've had everyone else except for you and Nick Pace. Oh, yeah, yeah we got to oh, get Nick Pace on. Yeah, we've had yeah. we've we, had we've had Julio on the show. We've had um, Lyman on the show. Trezano. We haven't had Trezano on the show yet either. Oh actually. yeah, we, we gotta, gotta get uh, the Lone Wolf, right? Is that his fight? Yeah, yeah. 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 He'll, he's, he'll be down for sure too. Yeah. Yeah, we've spoken to him a little bit. I'm pretty sure about possibly coming on, but we've yet to pull the trigger on it yet. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so Shane Burgos, welcome. Congratulations on that recent win. Yeah, man, you're doing yeah. it. Yeah. Thank you. I'm trying. I'm trying. You're stringing them together. How many wins is that in a row? Right. A That's few, three man. in a row. Yeah. Fuck yep. yeah, dude. Yeah, and you know what <laughs> the other Tiger Showman's guys have said? They're like, you guys need to get Shane Burgos on because they say you're like the real fight fanatic of Tiger Showman. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I'm, I, I fucking breed this shit. I really do. <laughs> yeah, everyone else is a little more of a casual where you're like yeah. knee deep into this. 100%. Both of you. <laughs> Yeah, so when we have, we're going to do a, a trivia night one night, possibly, at Great South Bay Damn. Brewery. We'll have to invite you out. Fuck yeah. I'm down. Bring you in as a guest, but then you'll wind up being the ringer. Who knows all the There we go. Well, he's, yep. he's going to be on my team. Yeah, you could be yeah. on Menace's team. Yeah. There you go. We're I need help. Promise you. Because, yeah, Menace, I got you, man. Menace don't know shit. Yeah. <laughs> Menace is very uh, MMA illiterate. He doesn't even remember well, his fights. Really? You don't even know your fights sometimes. Because I'm in it. Yeah. <laughs> I lived it. I get, I, I get to... that. That makes sense. Yeah. 
Yeah, you know how it is. So what? Uh, what's next on the horizon for you? Anything? I'm uh, trying to renegotiate my contract, go from there, because that was the last uh, fight of my deal. Ooh, oh, you fought it out. I fought it out, yeah. Great okay. way to fight it out, though. He fucked up. Uh, yeah. I forget. How do you pronounce that dude's name? Amerikani. Yes. Yeah, he beat Amerikani up pretty good. And put on a little bit of a show as well. That's always the plan. He, had a, he had a great jacket at weigh-ins, though. He did. He did. I, I had a great jacket. I had a, you I had did. a nice Gucci jacket. Yeah, you did. And then this, this motherfucker showed me up with the fucking uh, green mink seat. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> do you think it was real? Uh, I mean, it looked real. I, I, yeah. I don't think he would come with a fake one. Right? He, he, I think it's the style. Well, his, his sunglasses were good, too. Algerman Sterling's chain is fake. Is it? That big, thick one. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> I assumed it was real, but all so right. So did I. It, it might fuck be real it. now. If, if, it might if, be real If it now. looks real, who the fuck cares, right? Yeah. Yeah. Fuck uh, it. He wears it like it's real. He wears it well. He does. Exactly. exactly. No, it's amazing. Exactly. Right. It fooled me, so yeah, there we go. Yeah. I can't believe Dennis just threw it out there like that. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> we, Put him on black. No, we've talked about it before on the show. Yeah, no. He, right. he said it publicly that it's fake. But he said he's eventually going to get the real chain once he blows well, up. Well, no, it, it's, it's, it's not real. like... A metal that he's like trying to be like, oh, like trying to even like it's legit plastic. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. So he's not even like it's a joke. I mean, it's a joke, joke. Well, even I've seen him. He doesn't let people touch it. Yeah. To let them know that it's plastic. Like, yeah, he'll put up the ambiance yeah. like it's real. Yeah, I like that about him. <laughs> yeah, he's a funny dude. So what do you got going on tonight, Shane? Do you teach? I know a lot of you guys like run schools and teach. I teach on Thursdays. Thursday's my day to teach. I teach my advanced classes on Thursday. But uh, right now, I'm just hanging out. My daughter's taking a bath right now. I'm just giving her a bath. She's up there now with her mom right now. She's screaming because she's washing her hair. Ah, <laughs> uh, damn. What school yeah. do you teach at? I teach in New Windsor. Tiger Shulman's in New Windsor. New Windsor, New York. All right. Now, are you like the rest of them that we've spoken to? Like, you've been Tiger Shulman's your whole life, right? Yeah. I mean, I started out when I was 15 years old, and I'm 28 now. So, it's been do the math, 13 stand. years. 13 years. Do the math. Yeah, yeah. yeah thirteen hundred. Yeah, <laughs> that's a lifetime, pretty much. Yeah, but, I mean, I, I had no prior experience at all. I didn't wrestle when I was younger. I didn't come from any other background. It started when I was fifteen years old at that Tiger Shulman's near my house, and then it's been the same team ever since. Yeah, that's what it's about loyalty. It seems like a lot of yeah. you guys too are very loyal to Tiger Shulman and the whole system. And whatnot. well, I mean, he showed them the yeah. way. Yeah. What'd you say? They he, they showed you the way. You know, you guys yeah, were just exactly. young grasshoppers before you met Tiger. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I mean, yeah. we've been successful and winning, so why would we change anything up, man? Yeah. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Tiger Shulman. Every time I've met him and seen him, nicest guy in the world, and he's an OG. Yeah, tried, yeah, yeah. We tried to get Julio on tonight, too, uh, but he had to teach. Teaching. Yeah, he's teaching, yep. Yeah, I figured. He's a, work, he's a workhorse, yeah. Oh, I know that through and through. He's man. a hard worker, hard worker. Yeah, so who didn't we have on? We haven't had on Trezano now. I think Trezano and Lewis Galvin out are the only ones like that. And we got yeah, Jimmy. And we got get Nick Pace too. Oh, and yeah, Nick we've Pace had on Jimmy. And Nick Pace. We've had on Jimmy. Yeah, yeah. We had Jimmy on before video. We had Lyman on before video. We had Julio on when we had video, but we didn't have like the FaceTime Skype figured yeah. out yet. Oh yeah. There yeah. Slowly but surely, we're like trying to figure this shit out. Try and blow up and act like we don't know nobody. You know. I I get I I feel you trying to be like JRE right. Without, you know, blood, a little, a little blood. different. Yeah, we're trying to be like the, the fighter show, if you will. Like, you know how, like, Hel yeah. Helwani, don't get me wrong, he's a great show. He's a little bit of the antagonist. You know what I mean? Uh, like, he just wants to ask people, like, dumb drama shit and stuff yeah. like that. We just want to get people <laughs> on for laughs and whatnot. That's, that's, that's the best as a fighter. We, that's, because it's, it's laid back. Like, you know, right, I mean, right. especially you, Dan. You guys ask the same fucking questions every fucking time, every interview, right? Yeah. So, like, when we get those interviews that are just, like, laid back, they ask, like, random shit, like, oh, what's your favorite post-fight meal? I'm like, all right, now we're fucking talking. Now I'm interested. Now let's talk. Yeah, Instead yeah, of the yeah. bullshit, oh, what do you want next? What do you want to do next? Like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, like, I, yeah, I actually good. almost just drilled Stan in the face when he asked you, so what do you have next? What's next? Like, he just fought, Stan. He might have something immediately. <laughs> no! He came out of the fight Dude, clean. If I, if, I, if, I, <laughs> if I had a dollar for it every time I was asked that, like, Right, the the day of the fight, like literally, I get out the cage. Okay, what when are you fighting again? I'm like I don't fuck. It. I just got stitches. I'm like, yeah. I, I want to eat some fucking cheesecake and relax. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Usually, whenever I ask a guy what his game plan is, like three or four times I've asked that I get Ric Flair chopped by menace. Like, yeah. don't ask now, him that. Now, only one time have I been offered a fight within like a like two weeks of the fight. Wow, that, that's 
I think one time I, I have two. I think it was after my second fight, I got offered the the Long Island fight. And I was like, oh, I can't say no to that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was awesome. Pretty yeah, cool. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We were four on the same card today. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I got fucking. I've seen some instances where usually if you if the guy comes out clean and he had a great performance like Burgos, they usually try yeah. to throw them right back in. Yeah, but usually <laughs> usually not decisions. He didn't decision the dude. I know but, that, but I'm just saying in general. Like I would always, yeah, decision a fool. Yeah, the, well, the dude, always. the dude that, the dude that just fought uh, Arlovsky on the same card as me. He already got booked two days after. Yeah, he's, he's fighting um the main event against uh, over him. Oh yeah, that's a big. But I was telling Menace, he, Menace didn't see that fight. That dude, oh like, that black dude. Yeah, he just yeah. like I told you, he just went, he touched Arlovsky like that, like barely hit him, and Arlovsky went. Flying. I didn't even see it. I was warming up, and I'm like. I, I was I was two fights after that. I was warming up. I'm like, all right, I guess I got to warm up harder because I'm fighting in uh, 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. yeah. That sucks for a fighter. Like, when you're warming up, you kind of schedule yeah. your warm up, especially when it's a fight right for Like, oh, I got 15 minutes. Let me hit some mitts. Like, this first round, second round, I'll kind of stretch out. Yeah. Third round, I'll start getting mentally prepared and then I'll go out and I'll fight. But when the guy gets knocked out in the first round, you're hitting mitts. Like, oh, shit. Uh, all right. Yeah. Yep. Like, yeah, Here we go. That's, that's why the, I think the best spot in the card are like the the openers for the prelims or like the opener for the main card. Yeah, yeah. You know exactly when you're gonna fight. Yeah. Like they can't they can't they can't rush it at that point. They gotta start at eight or they gotta start at ten. Right. He hit. That's the only time you're guaranteed. Yeah. The guy Rosenstrike. He's trained a little bit with the Black Zillions, and he's from like I don't even know where he's from. Some uh somewhere else. I, I, yeah, I saw the flag. I, I have no clue. What, I never seen that flag before in my life. So. <laughs> yeah. And he speaks English, though, so it's like South yeah. America or something. But he landed like a check hook to the Saw neck it. of Orlowski. Yeah. And Orlowski just face-planted and was like, I'm good. You're good. Uh, yeah, I missed the whole time. Because how, how old is Orlowski? How old is Orlowski now? We, we, we talked about this. Orlowski's, I think, 42 now. Yeah. Is he? Yeah, he's I old. Think he's so. up there. He looks, he looks great for 42. He does not look that old. Yeah. He's working but out with Phil DeRue. Of he's course, he definitely taking some shots. Yeah. yeah. You know I what mean? I mean? Dude's been in fucking wars. He's been around since we, what UFC like twelve or something like that. Yeah. What are your he's thoughts? A heavyweight. Yeah. What are your thoughts on on like the people call it the chin? He lost his chin. Is that a real thing in your book? I, I feel like it has to be right. Like if, if if you get brutally knocked out, I feel like for example, like Chuck Liddell after he got knocked out by um Rashad, he was never the same after that one, man. Like yeah. Rashad. That that punch Rashad landed on that overhand right that put him down, man. That was brutal. And then he, he's been getting like the punch that Tito knocked him out with. I mean, yeah, granted he's old, but he's, that was not a big punch. Yeah. And then even the punch that that Rich Franklin knocked him out with. So uh, yeah, I'm not a. Uh, well, they it, say it, they say once if you, you had that many concussions, you got to stop. Yeah, once you get knocked out once, like flatline, it's easier yeah. to get knocked out again. Yeah, is what it yeah. seems like. Like yeah, then, I mean, I, yeah. remember back in the day, Chuck could take a brick to the face. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like after that knockout, that was devastating. That it wasn't like a little knockout. Like he got fucking. That was brutal. It was hard to watch, honestly. Yeah, big Chuck fan, so you, you hate to see yeah. that. That's yeah, even exactly. like um, we were talking about like Ben Askren, like how Ben Askren's talking about retiring, or even Damian Maya's like 42 now. Like last episode, we were talking about. I think they should both kind of retire. You know, like yeah. it's only going to get worse for both of them from this point on. I mean, for Maya, he—I think he's absorbed what, like, five strikes in his last like five fights or something like that. Yeah. Well, Maya's like, if I'm Maya, I'm hanging out. Yeah. Uh, Masvidal's yeah. like, yo, when I get the belt, I want to defend against Maya. I'd be like, okay, I'll wait. <laughs> I will yeah, wait. Yeah. I will not take a Maya... fight for like a year and a half if I give that fight. Yeah. Exactly. He's taking no damage. He's making good paychecks. So, I mean, for him. The I, on, yeah. The I, only I, reason like said, I, I stick around for him. The only yeah. reason I say for Maya to go is because, especially go out on a win over Ben Askren, is because he's not beating Colby, he's not beating Usman, and he's not beating, what's his name? Yeah, but, but if Masvidal uh, fights Woodley. for the title, gets the title, and goes, I want him. Yeah. He can jump yeah, the like, line. I, I agree. I, see, if that wasn't the case, I would agree with you, but what Dennis said is, is a great point. Like, I would do that. I would stick around for like a year and a half, see how the, how the division shakes yeah. out. Yeah. If something happens, and I'm like, all right, you want to fight me? Let's go. Collect some fight UFC money doing shit in Brazil and fucking yeah. shaking hands and kissing babies. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Well, he, he, doesn't need, he doesn't need a fight. He knows he's set. He's got his own academy and everything like that, too. So yeah, he train, can hang up a little bit. Yeah, jiu-jitsu. Yeah, like he wanted EX uh, for Diego, but Diego, apparently, the UFC let him go, apparently. They oh, did? yeah, I did see that. That's, the, yeah, that's been that. the report. Or at least Diego yeah, came that. out and said, like, I'm not fighting anybody. The UFC let me go. Yeah. 
What? I still haven't heard. I haven't heard it officially. Like I saw some other guys that that, that got cut and they they put out like, an official report, but I didn't see that Diego was on the list. But I saw Diego post that. Did yeah. Diego win his last one? No. Yeah. He, no, he lost. Nope. The, he lost. Oh, the Chiesa. yeah. Mike crushed him. Yeah. But oh, the fight okay, before yeah. that, he won. He beat Mickey Gall. Yeah. Right. Now, I mean, I love Diego. The dude's been around since what? UFC one or two? Tough, tough or one. Tough, tough yeah, one. tough one. Yeah, tough one jam. You know? Crazy. The only Crazy. thing is, is like when I think about fighters, some fighters after the UFC, like what? I feel like some of these guys can't do anything. That's true. That's why you got to set yourself up, and like you, like you're doing now with this podcast. I mean. I, I'm honestly trying to start my own, but yeah, this is yeah. this is what you got to do. You gotta set, while you're, well, you got to build your brand, build your name, and yeah, it's it's it, for a fighter. Most of us, especially like, I don't know how to do that. You know what I mean? Like, it's a, I'm not a businessman, but you kind of got to be a businessman so you're set up for life after fighting. Yeah, you got to think about those things now, like while you're in it. Right. That's what I'm trying to get get my hands into some other shit too, just while I can before right. it's too late. Yeah. So now, what would your plan be after fighting? I know you're still young, you're still fresh in the game. Yeah, yeah, that, that's definitely my my main focus is fighting. But I'm I'm like we're talking about. I, I love this fucking sport, so I would love to be a commentator. I would love to do like the Paul Felder thing, like follow in Paul Felder's footsteps. Big fan of Paul Felder, but that would be awesome to 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 if they need somebody else to commentate some fights and send me out. I've done it before for some amateur shows, and I, I have a good time doing it. I do it when I'm watching the fights with my friends anyway. So I'm right. like, if I, if I can get paid and go to the fights and sit front row. And yeah. talk about the fights. Right. You can't beat that for me. I, yeah. I love it. Uh, myself and the man have done a couple. We did a boxing one. We did an MMA one. Oh, yeah, for sure. In 2020, we're going to start putting on some shows, like working with a couple of our friends and start putting on shows. So we want some of the Tiger Showman guys on the shows, absolutely. Like like promoters? Promoters, yeah. Promoter? Yep. Oh, man, yeah, for sure. That's, and that's... we want Shane Burgos to sit in the middle of us yep. and call some fights with us, absolutely. Uh, 100% down. You got my word. Yeah, for Ooh. sure. And then even like um, you were saying with the commentary, like Men has got a really good job now with PSCG, which is like the. Are you from Long Island or you're from the city more or less? No, I'm from, uh, about an hour away from Manhattan, up north. Yeah, so PSCG is the lighting. Monroe Woodbury is electric and yes. like the the power yes. company of Long Island, basically in Long Island. Monroe yeah. Woodbury was in Sargadies, uh section in in like uh, athletics in high okay. school. Yeah, section nine. But what I was yeah, gonna yeah, say yeah, is yeah, section nine. Menace got the okay. Like, Menace said to the boss man, Dana White, like, yo, I think I want to do commentary or whatever. And he was like, fly out. We'll give you the test, and we'll take it from there. And Menace never went. What? Yeah. He, never, <laughs> he stopped responding to me. No, he didn't. You never. You don't hit him up enough. He gets up. He want, you know, like, I don't know. I just don't want to bother him. Yeah. I get that. I get that. But damn, man, that's the fucking, that's the setup right there. Yeah. And I feel like Menace could do it, too. Menace could be in that commentary booth. Yeah, yeah, could. get the personality, man. Yeah, definitely on like <laughs> UFC tonight or one of those type of shows. I'm the only one drinking a beer at the desk. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fucking awesome, man. <laughs> Shut up, Michael Bisping. Okay, packing. Up. <laughs> I'll take another uh, Corona when you get a chance. But yeah, I thought you know he looked really good tonight. But yeah, maybe That's one day, maybe one day it'll be Shane Burgos and Menace Bermudez on Woo. the commentary booth at a fight. Damn, night or down, bro. For sure, I'm down. And what it is, too, I feel like they pick champions. Like, they have Dominic Cruz. They have Woodley, Usman. But, but that's, they... why, that's why I use Felder as an example. Because Felder wasn't a champion, but he did commentary for the CFFC, yeah. which is a, a, a local local promotion. And um, he did great at that. So they, they saw him doing that, and they just picked him right up. Well, yeah, that's what I was going to say. There's Felder. There's Anthony Smith. There's yeah. a few guys that they've had that were um, yet to be champions. I won't say never yep. going to be a champion, but yeah, yet yeah. to be champions. Yeah. And then, yep. yeah, could have been you, Menace. Yeah. yeah. And a bunch of other guys. Like Eves Edwards was, was one of them. Yep. Uh, like, now he's at PFL. Okay, yes. Now he's, yeah, he was, he was on the UFC tonight for a while, though. Yeah. Eves is really good with the PFL, too. Yeah. Like, like I remember yeah. at one point, like, Brendan Schaub had some controversy. Like, he was like, this is the best we could do. Like, he said some shit. He backtracked after he said it. I saw that. I saw that on Twitter, yeah. Yeah, he said something about, like, Eves Edwards, Rashad, and someone else were like the panel, and he made like a black remark, but he was like, oh, this is the best they could do. Like, I understand you got to fill a quota. And then immediately, Eve Edwards was like, you aren't talking about me, were you? Like, called him out on it, you know? Yeah. But not. Nah, <laughs> Eves is really good with the PFL. And then we've gone to some of the PFLs, and him and Menace have a really good relationship. He's like super analytical. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, he's been, just, he's been doing it since fun. fucking I was like eight years old. Yeah. yeah. Fighting bare knuckle in gymnasiums. 
But I'm saying even like the commentary, he's not mailing it in. He like studies yeah. that shit. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, well, he, he's fuck. He's a legit fighter himself. That fucking jump head kick over Josh Thompson. Yeah. That's like one of the one of the greatest knockouts yeah, ever. I, honestly, I agree. He doesn't get enough credit. That was insane. He just fucking jumps and high kicks. Who the fuck was thinking that was coming? Like that. That was insane. Yeah. Josh, my, me and my friend used to always say, man, he should have just ducked. He should have just ducked. <laughs> yeah, he was running away. Yeah. They well, turned around. <laughs> wow. Well, he was he like. He tried a back fist. Yeah. He a back fist. Boom. I was like, that, that was, I had to watch it like seven times. I remember uh, I was, that's back in the day when I was like, I was probably 15 years old. I was like, what the fuck? Josh definitely was like, I'm about to hit him with this shit. And then was like, yep. whoa, what just happened? What just happened? Waking up. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. But, um. So when did you become a fight fan? Like you, I know, like I said, everyone says that you're the, the encyclopedia yeah, I, of fighting. I, I started watching it at Ultimate Fighter two. I just caught it on on it was I caught it right before it started. But I watched the um, UFC on when they had those old episodes. And my first fight I ever saw was Matt Hughes versus Carlos Newton mm-hmm. when Matt Hughes put him on the cage and then slammed him and knocked him the fuck out. Yeah, I was like, I was like, is this real? Like, what is this? So they get in a cage. What the fuck? What, what are they doing? What what? And then I kept watching the whole episode. I was like, this is insane what is this then that night later at night ultimate fire 2 started and that's when i was instantly i was like damn well, hooked, hooked. word on the street is matt hughes was actually going out because of that triangle and slammed them went out like went out yeah went yeah out. yeah went out yeah slammed i mean I, well, I watched that came exactly. to. i watched that a million times you see it he 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 sits up he's like wait i won i won he's and like that, he yeah. jumps on top of the cage starts celebrating yep crazy similar to like even with asker and maya again like maya put the choke on Askren went out like got like one tap then as soon as he let it go, Askren yeah. woke up. Like he just like yeah. Matt Hughes just went just, out. Just, just shut it off. Just shut it off. Yeah. Then he knocked Carlos Newton out. And then when the referee broke it up, he was like thinking I lost. Yeah. And then he was like, No, 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 you won. Get away. Get away from him. He's, He's out. Like, oh shit, he's jumped up top of the cage, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Everyone Lucky. everyone wants that kind of knockout. That's like a rampage Ricardo Arona type. Yeah. Knockout. Ah, brutal, man. That was fucking awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. one of, that's one of my favorites ever. Were you a Pride fan? Oh, of course, of course, of course. How could you not be a Pride fan? That at one point, Pride was probably better than the UFC. I'd I say agree. when it comes to just action of the fights, like that fucking Fedor getting German suplexed on his neck, and then getting the Kimura right after that. How did he even survive that that fucking German suplex? He literally landed on his neck, rolled rolled Randleman over, puts him in a Kimura, and taps him out within a minute. Like after that. Oh, Crazy. Yeah. Randleman was a fucking killer back then. Uh, that, he was my favorite. Everyone was fucking. Uh, they were all juiced up. So <laughs> everyone was fucking. I don't care. Diesel. So diesel. Awesome. Yep, yeah, diesel. Yeah. Diesel. One of my favorites of all time. Krokop. Krokop. That motherfucker is the scariest dude in his prime. I don't think there's anyone scarier than Krokop. What was? What was? It? He had something for his legs. It was like... right. Right leg. Right leg. Hospital. Left. Left, left leg. Cemetery. Right. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> It's like you know the head kick's coming, and he's still kill, killing dudes with it, uh, like decapitating motherfuckers. Well, that was even like remember I'm, we were talking about chins before. Like remember Mark Hunt ate that kick, yeah, and yes, like shook it off. Yeah, yes, crazy. And Insane. at that point, you were like, "There's no way this guy can get put to sleep." But then he eventually yep. started getting put to yep. sleep. Yeah. Yep. Well, with age, he's another one's an older dude. Yeah. Yeah. But he was making money, man. Like his, I think his his last fight in the UFC. I, who did he, he lost to? Big, big, pretty. I don't remember his. I remember his nickname. I don't remember his, his regular name. Something big, big, pretty, something. But uh, he made like eight hundred grand off that fight. Yeah, and he's. I, been, I'll be fighting too. Yeah, he's yeah. been making eight hundred thousand dollars for a fight for. A yes, minute, I feel no the, the whole yes. time, and that was the thing. Like the UFC, when they bought the Pride and they got all the contracts, they were like, "Listen, yep. we'll just pay you. We like yep. we'll buy you out of your contract. We don't even want you to fight." And he was like, "Nah, I'm fighting. Said, nah. You guys are paying me what my worth is, and I'm fighting." So he I always had a big that. contract. Gotta love that. Yeah, because when he when Pride picked him up, he was a K one champion. Yeah, yeah. And big in Japan, so they were like, "All right, here's you know a huge fucking contract." And they used to pay him in like bags of money instead yep. of like yeah, that's good old. We got to get Phil back on for those type of stories. They used to pay them in cash in Japan. Right. The good old days. That's they, awesome. With a yakuza, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the Japanese mafia. <laughs> Yeah. I don't mess with that. <laughs> yeah, no, you don't want to mess with that. We don't even want to talk about that. The one, what... the one yeah. thing I liked about Pride was the what was it? Ten minute first round. I love that about five Pride. minute second yeah. round. Yeah, that's why they're uh, honestly I think the majority of the fights were finished because that ten minute first round. Yeah, ten minutes is a fucking long time. Fuck yeah, ten well, that, minutes. That's even like we were saying with the bad motherfucker belt. That's what they should have. It should have been a fifteen minute fucking long fight. 
No breaks. That, that would have been that. Dude, fuck it. If it's for that, it's for a made up belt. Let's make up a new fucking game. That would have been awesome, honestly. Right. Yeah. So, what's your That's stance it. on the BMF belt? You think they should keep it around or they should get rid of that shit? Keep it. Yeah, you definitely can't keep. I don't know if you can keep it around. Like, who's Monster Dog gonna fight next? He's probably gonna fight for the title next, right? Well, that's Nate, a- Nick's coming out of the woodworks and being like, "Yeah, no, that's actually my belt." That all right? If 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 he fights Nate or Nick next, then yeah, keep it around. But he can't fight Usman for the double belt. That'd just be weird. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if they're gonna keep it going. Honestly, well, all Jorge ever says is, "I want." He says he wants the belts, but then he like contradicts that by saying, "I want the most money." The most money yeah. is not going to come from fighting Usman if he wins. It might come from fighting Colby because then that'll be like some Tito Ortiz, Chuck Liddell type shit. That would be dope. But the most money is going to come from defending the BMF belt against Conor McGregor or Nick Diaz. Obviously, McGregor is, is the bigger one, but, but Nick Diaz would be fucking dope Hang too. on, uh, hang on. Now. Now. But if he fights, gets the belt, and then like defends the BMF, now he's got like a, uh, a bigger resume. Yes, but if Usman or Covington beat Masvidal, then right. the BMF belts, right. it's, it's all wasted. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I agree. Yes, yeah, yeah. If he loses, then it's, it's all gone, yeah. Like right now, Man, the UFC beat. has that ball where they can go Connor or Nick Diaz or even the Nate rematch and have it be a huge fucking fight. I thought fight. Connor got announced yep. against Cerrone. It's not official yet. Oh, no. it's still just rumors, no. huh? Yeah. And January 18th, they, they, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I, I I think him and him and Masvidal will be a fucking a banger. I think uh, Connor's gonna look for the easier the easier fight though. I don't think he's gonna go for for Masvidal. Well, you're a fight fanatic too. Like I'm a big fight fan. Like I'm a fanatic, if you will, as well. But I think yeah. people are. I obviously I think Masvidal wins against Connor because he's much bigger and the skills. But people think like it's a walkthrough for him against Connor. Like people underestimate no, Connor because no. they hate him personally. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not a big fucking Conor fan either. But that that's not. It's not automatically an easy fight. But I think Masvidal can out grapple the shit out of him for sure. His yeah. grapp his, his grappling is so underrated. Like he tapped out Michael Chiesa. Michael Chiesa is a legit black belt. Like Masvidal darsed him, which is that's super impressive. And his wrestling is fucking good. He's been just defensive wrestling because he's been fighting more guys that want to take him down. But his offensive wrestling is great too. Yeah, like I I obviously I want to root for Usman because Usman's buddies with menace and a friend of the show and we have mutual yeah, friends I to, yeah. but yeah. i wouldn't mind seeing masvidal versus colby who the fuck would yeah that would, just just for the, the the press conference i want to see that fight i feel like masvidal would be quiet during those press conferences though like he wouldn't have as much to say as colby would but i think colby would be hysterical and then it's one of those things like i always wonder what happened in the practice room between them that's true yeah You'll never know because they're never going to tell, right? I mean, they're going to they're going to talk their shit, but they're never going to. You know, you get two sides of the story, but the, the truth lies somewhere in the middle, right? Yeah. But now I'm... there's two things though. In the practice room, there's this. I'm good. These are 16 yeah. headgear, shin pads, and there's also I'm just practicing. Let me just let loose. Let me just try. Things change when it actually counts one, and 100%. things change when you only have four ounce gloves on and like no shin pads and no headgear. Yeah, for sure. 100%. So those are a few elements that, man, things can fucking change. Yeah. And on top of that, you got that, that other factor that in the gym, that's your that's your comfort zone. I mean, that's your house. Yeah. Being in that cage, yeah. that's nobody's comfort zone, really. I mean, you're they're in a complete – you got to make sure you're, you're a game day fighter, too. So, yeah, you might beat him up in the gym, but then as soon as it comes to, to game time, he's not the same fighter. He's, he's ready yeah. to go, ready to kill. Yeah, so we'll ask Shane. UFC 245 is the next big pay-per-view. How do you see yes. Usman versus Covington going? I, I got to go with Usman. I think he's the better striker. My daughter's smart. I was like, I, oh, she's so cute. I think he's the better striker, and I think he'll be able to to, to stuff um Colby's takedown. So I think I'm going to have to de- definitely go with Usman on that one. Man, How about you guys? Uh, I mean, I, like I said, I want Usman, but I'm leaning towards Colby. Yeah? Well, Colby, his pressure. His pressure in his cardio. He's, 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 he's a, a more – yeah, he's a more gritty fighter. Get in your face. Yeah. Smother you. Constant yeah. pressure where – Usman loves some space. He loves, but Usman does a great job of making you stay at space. Yeah. Like, I, I, I think Usman's last fight against Woodley, he kind of fought how Kobe fought against Robbie. The, the constant pressure on Woodley, keeping Woodley on the, on the cage, getting those takedowns, faking the takedowns, hitting those strikes. So it'll be interesting to see because who's going to take a step back? Who's going to be the one to go back? You right. know what I mean? Because neither of them wants to move back. So that's going to be super interesting to see. And like you guys both know very well, gas tank. Did something just break. Gas tank is a big thing. 
Yeah, for sure, especially for a five rounder. Yeah, so it's gonna be who can keep up the pressure for the whole five rounds because that's gonna be five, yeah. that's gonna be a five rounder, I think. Yeah, I think so. I think so for sure. And menace. I'm, I'm hoping. I'm hoping Usman gets to finish quicker, but but Kobe's tough. Gotta give him that. Because they're, they're both not submission guys, you know what I'm saying? No. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you look at it on paper, I know anyone could be knocked out. Like shit could happen in a fight. They're both not KO artists, and they're both not submission guys. They're like both grind. They're the same style, pretty much. Yeah. One's a yep, southpaw, yep, yep. one's orthodox. Yeah. So it's gonna man, come I, down I, to I, I, the grind. It's a fun fight, man. Really, really, like it's hard to because you can't really. I can't picture Kobe moving back, but then I can't picture him moving Usman back either. So it's kind. It's a super intriguing fight. The only reason why I don't want Usman to maybe win. Is because then we'll never get him on the show. He'll be too Hollywood. We'll never be able to get him on the show. Yeah. Yeah, him and Menace were super close, and now I always joke that he dropped Menace for Henry Cejudo. Yeah. <laughs> so he's like, you know the what? Menace, the triple C. Yeah. The heck, man. He was like, me and you could be friends. I'll get rid of this Menace Bermuda's character. You're my new guy. <laughs> you guys look the same, so. He's like, what are you, Puerto Rican? No, I'm Mexican. Ah, eh, that'll do. <laughs> <laughs> same know. thing. Yeah. Tomato, We're all tomato. The same. <laughs> yeah. So now a fight in your division. How do you see Volkanovski versus Max Holloway going? I got to go with Max, man. That dude, he's he's good. <laughs> you, you can't deny the fact that the dude's good. 145, he's he, he's he's solid. He, I think he's the best 145 right now. And I I think Volkanovski's just too too short. And um, Holloway's just so good at keeping his range. He's got fucking cardio for days. I don't think cardio's going to come into play with this one. They're, they're both in phenomenal shape always. But uh, when it comes to his striking, if you look at the strikes, Volkanovski strikes versus Holloway strikes in two completely different styles. Holloway will switch stances a lot. He throws a ton of volume, doesn't get tired, doesn't slow down. Volkanovski is more of a one shot at a time, get you against cage wrestling, you take you down kind of guy. And we know Holloway's hard to take down, so I got to go with Holloway. How he's going to win, I, I'm going to say, I think Volkanovski's tough, so I'm going to go with the decision. Hear me out. Yeah. When was last time Holloway's made 145? July. Yeah, he just fought Frankie Edgar. <laughs> Damn it. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I thought the same thing. When, as soon as he fought Poye, he's, go, ah, he's going forgot. right into that. Forgot. He went right into the Frankie fight. I was saying, I was like, damn, he's going to make 45 already. I was like, that's fucking crazy. Right, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> if that didn't happen, I, I, I might agree that that might be a little bit different on the fight. Because I know f making 45 is tough for him. Yeah. He's, he's a big huge. motherfucker, man. He's fucking huge. And where I think Max is an amazing fighter, I do also think that the night that he fought Frank Yeager, I don't want to say that was the night Frank Yeager got old, but that was definitely an off night for Frank Yeager. And now it had a lot to do with what Max was doing to him and whatnot, but I feel like if you ask Frank Yeager, like, what was one of your worst performances, he's going to say that night. Like, he just seemed like he was behind, his timing was off, like, he didn't seem like the Frank Yeager. Like, That's true. It's just, yeah, I, I, I can agree with that, but... Uh... It's hard to say if that was because he was fighting Max or if it was because Frankie just had an off night. And, I mean, we don't we never really know. Yeah, and then also you got to factor in uh, the size aspect where Max yeah. is a huge 145 or Frank Yeager is a small one. Is a, yep. He's not even a big 135 or Frank Yeager. Yeah. He's That's going cool. down 35, right? Yeah. I'm excited for that, man. Yeah, I, I, Him and Aldo are going down to 35. Oh, my God. We, we were talking Aldo's about going that. going down 35. To, at the same card, bro. I remember back in the day, Aldo being like, "I think I gotta go up to 155. 45 is too hard." I'm like, "What? Now you're going the opposite direction, my dude?" Yeah, I have no idea how he's doing you, that. Have you met Aldo? Uh, just like in passing. Yeah, I don't think he's a big 45er. So I was always confused as to how he had trouble making 45. But he's like, leaned I, I mean, up like a motherfucker. I mean, at 45. That, the picture I saw from that last picture of him flexing, he looked shredded. So I mean, I think. Physically, he can make 35. Yes. I've seen guys like Mar Marlon Marais is huge for yes. 35. Yes. So if he makes 35, I think Aldo can definitely make 35. How does that fight but, go uh, between Marlon and fucking Aldo? It depends which Aldo shows up, man. Aldo's been like so hot and cold lately. Like, I got he was one of my favorite fighters to, uh, coming up, but um, like that fight with Volkanovski, it was just like he just didn't want to fight. He was just he was content with laying on, like letting Vol Volkanovski hold him on the cage. Yeah. Like he completely content. He's like, dude, make throw. He hasn't thrown like he's known for his low kicks, dude. He hasn't. Rattled off low kicks. When's the last time he's thrown low kicks? Yeah. A that might be a problem. Oh, yeah. That's very true. Yeah. That might be a health problem. He might have met, maybe broken ankles or something, messed up feet. I, I don't know. But he, against Holloway, he barely threw any low kicks. Against um, Frankie, he barely threw any low kicks. And in that, that Volkanovski fight, I don't think he threw any low kicks. 
I think he had a fucked up foot for a minute. I think he had like a motorcycle accident or some shit where he fucked up his foot. But that was, yeah. Yeah, but th this has been years now. Yeah, I, 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 I want to say that since the last couple of years, maybe that's why he stopped throwing low kicks. Because I remember the low kick oh. was a game changer. Yeah. Like, favor. Remember the favor, the favor fight? Yeah. Right. Yeah. He ate Frank. Yeah. He ate uh, Kenny Florian. Yeah. Um, yes. Frank Yeager. You know what I mean? Like, yep. The first Frankie fight, yeah. Yeah, he just fell off of him. I don't know. I, I, he said he wanted to do boxing, so I don't know. Maybe he was trying to show off his boxing, I guess. I heard that he wanted to go out after he was done with his UFC contract and be, go try boxing. Well, even I feel like him saying boxing and him talking about or moving down to 135, as long as Max is winning, he's in no man's land. He's never yeah. going to be the champion at 145 because he cannot beat Max Holloway. He just accepted it. it. It's, funny, it's not even that he can't beat him because obviously it doesn't anything can happen, but I don't think they can't market that fight again because Holloway TKO'd him twice already. Yeah. He would have to go on a serious tear to get another title shot at 145. Yeah. yeah. And he just lost to Volkanovski too. Exactly. So yeah. So he, exactly. So he's so far behind that it, it just probably won't be able to happen in, in, in the career he's at. Where if he goes down to 135 because of his name Completely recognition, different, yep. yeah, he's a big yep. fight there. And, and him versus versus Cejudo is a great fight because he's got phenomenal takedown defense, and he's super fast. So I mean, that's that's a great fight. They that they can market that fight. Man, p poor Aljamain though. Everyone's cutting the line on Aljamain. Uh, yeah, yeah. So yep. now it's like at UFC two forty five, Aldo could win spectacularly, and he probably will get Henry Cejudo. Or that's true. they were trying to make Aljamain versus Peter Yan, and Aljamain had to get wrist surgery. So now if Uriah Faber. Hits fucking Yam with the right hand and then guillotines, and they're going to be like, "Yo, you're right, Faber." Yeah, I, said the same, I said the same shit the other day. I was like, "If if if Faber wins this fight, don't be shocked if he gets a title fight off." Oh, of that. one be million percent, he'll get it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Would yeah. not shock me even in this. Does he deserve it? I don't think so. Come off two, just two fights, yeah, but uh, it, it would sell. It would sell. Oh, for sure. Because we if were it talking. Makes money, about, it makes sense. Yeah, we were talking about the next person to fight John Jones. It was. Um, Either Dom Reyes or the winner of Johnny Walker and um, Corey Anderson. Anderson. Corey Anderson. Yeah. Yeah. And then I was like, yo, because they were pushing Johnny Walker hard. And I was like, yo, yes. Stan, look up the following of all three guys. And Johnny Walker blew both of them out of the water. I'm like, and that's why they were pushing him so hard. Yep. Yeah. I'm like, that's bullshit, man. Yeah, Johnny Four. Walker had like 400,000 followers. So that's why they were like, all right, this is the fight we can sell. I, I, I get it from a business standpoint. But if you're looking at it from just strictly like from a sports standpoint, like, Corey Anderson deserves the next shot. You can't even deny that. I felt like Dom Reyes. Like, I feel like Dom Reyes does. Dom, Dom Reyes. I, I like Dom Reyes. I have nothing bad to say about him, but he he's good. He's definitely good. But his last fight was against Weidman, who hasn't who was a middleweight. And the fight before that, who he fight? Um, Vulcan. Vulcan, and it was very very controversial decision. A lot of people thought Vulcan won. Corey's been on the tear, man. He, and uh, to finish Johnny Walker like that on the feet when everyone's been busting his balls that like he's not a finisher, he's not exciting, and then he goes up yeah. there and he knocks him out on his feet. Like, and the dude, if you look at his record, his resume, he's be, he's beaten guys in the top five, in the top ten. Reyes has Volkanovski. I think it's the only or, or well, Volkanovski. I think it's his only big win. Well, he's got Jar now, Jared Cannonier was a big win. But, but oh, yes. Cannonier a middleweight now. Yeah, is now a surging middleweight, and I think um, Dom Reyes has a win over OSP, I believe too. Yes, but yeah, yeah, not a bad choice. But if I if if, you, if you're asking me, if it was up to me, I, I would say Corey Anderson. I think, I, well, I think that's the more deserving guy. But who moves the needle more? Maybe maybe Dominic Reyes. Well, hang on, because Dominic Reyes has been talking. Yeah. Well, no, so is Corey. But where Dominic yeah. Reyes is like, John Jones, I want to fight you. Corey Anderson's like, fuck the UFC. I want to fight John <laughs> Jones. So he's going about it a little differently. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to help get a title shot, though, honestly. Yeah, yeah. You can't tell the UFC to go fuck themselves. Like, <laughs> I'm sure you watch the post fights and whatnot, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. you saw Dana White. Dana White was like, if he wants... Fuck the UFC. He could fight out his contract and go wherever he wants. Or he can keep taking the fights we give him, and he'll get a title shot when he gets a title shot. Ugh. That was David yeah. Wright's way of saying you're not getting yeah. the next title shot. Yep. And so then there I you saw go. So you guys are right. John Jones recently said him and his team looked at Dominic Reyes yeah. and looked at Corey Anderson. He wants to fight Dominic Reyes. Yeah. I saw that. Yep. Which so I think that interesting fight. Jones, yeah, Jones is definitely in the driver's seat. I think he, he, he has the opportunity to pick and choose. So I think oh, he's definitely going to. Sure. Gonna, gonna go with him so. and also he just has to make like a little like whoever he wants to fight he has to make like a little bit of a banter with him and the ufc go oh we yeah. can sell this now yeah and they and he already did yeah yeah they already started going back and forth on twitter a little bit him and reyes like literally right after that that post oh no reyes been going for weeks we had reyes on the show a few episodes ago and yeah he's been 
And even back in months ago, we had him. He's been saying like, um, similar to how when Weidman got into MMA, he was chasing Anderson Silva. Yeah. From the start, that's been Dom Reyes. As soon as he got I like that, I like that. Yeah. Once he got in the game, he was like, yeah. "Who's the champion of my weight class?" John Jones. So he's been chasing John Jones the whole time. That's awesome, man. Yeah, I love shit like that. I'll think it's like the Cinderella story. Yeah. Nah, that'd be cool. That'd be cool. I mean, I don't got nothing against John Jones, but yeah, it would be. It, you you kind of like. You're like low key rooting for him to lose just because everybody he fights is always such a big underdog. Yeah. Well, the man's he, never technically lost. Yeah. Well, a good question. Which That's why. I, a good like, question for Shane. Too. How'd you score Thiago Santos versus John Jones? Dude, I had to go back and watch that fight because. Uh, Super close. I little, <laughs> yeah, I was, I was drinking a little bit for that. I don't remember much of that fight. But yeah, uh, yeah I, I remember the first three rounds being close, but I, I thought. I, I, I scored it for for uh, John Jones. Yeah, I remember watching it, and the first time I watched it, I was like, "Yo, I think Santos won that fight three to two. And then I remember Some people, yeah, rewatching re it, it, and I was like, "Uh, three, maybe three to two Jones, but it was very yeah. close." Drinking and watching yeah. fights. That's yeah. where I was most dangerous on Twitter. Yeah, stay and I would be like <laughs> a six pack deep, and by two forty five, I'd be fighting like, "Shit, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah." I get going. Or 50, 55. <laughs> like, I'll fuck you up. <laughs> so you're going, I gotta through, stay up there. <laughs> you're going through some contract negotiations now. Uh, any word on any updates on it? No, I'm just waiting, man. Just waiting to see, see what they offer. See what uh, see what we can get. Try to get the, get the most I can possibly get. You get what I'm worth. Well, I mean, I can look it up. But where are you at right now? My Yeah, I mean, honestly, I don't even care. To tell, like people are like, do you mind if I ask? I'm like, dude, you can Google. Google. Right, like, right. We're in a sport where you can literally just fucking Google how much I made. Yeah, my last one was 28 28. Okay. Now, are you shopping around one championship, Bellator, or you want to stick with the UFC? I want to stick with the UFC. So um, I definitely want to see what they offer me first, and then we'll go from there. And uh, I'm not open, I'm not closed off to hear other, other, um, other opportunities from other people. If they, I'll, I'll listen to them 100%. And um, if it gives me more leverage, and maybe I can negotiate even more. But I definitely, if I had to choose, I would want to stay in the UFC. I feel like yeah. the best fighters in the world are in the UFC. Yeah. Um, I want to be in the UFC. They're definitely going to come back with 30-30. <laughs> they better not. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if they were smart, they would definitely re-sign you, put you in a nice contract, and have you be a guy that they showcase on the East Coast and build up as a future they star. Yeah, they've been doing that. Like, I mean, I fought – this is my seventh fight in the UFC. Every single one has been in the, the Northeast Coast. I fought Amazing. five times in New York, five times in New York, one time in Ottawa, Canada, which is just literally north of New York, and then one time in Boston. So literally wow. seven fights, all of them in the Northeast. So you fought five times in the UFC in New York? Yeah, um, yeah MSG you? twice, Albany, Buffalo, and Long Island. Oh, man, and Damn. they got the homie Jared Gordon going to Brazil again. <laughs> yeah, that's rough. Again, yeah, again. I've, uh, I've taken a flight one time, and I didn't even need to. I could have drove, but I was like, ah, I don't want to drive some. Yeah, yeah. Well, he... it's way cheaper to fly your team to those fights in Boston or New York. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. You know what? You fly your team to Brazil. That's a G. Wow. Yeah, easily, easily. Off the top. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, Jared yeah, was that, trying to get on absolutely. this most recent MSG card, and they were like, "Nope." Week later, we're sending you to Brazil. Yeah, I saw that. Oh, come on. Cut the guy some slack. He's already fought in fucking Brazil once. <laughs> yeah, and I think he's the only one at this point from New York that hasn't fought that in hasn't New York. That hasn't fought in New York. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. The only one. I think he was on the Milwaukee card, right? Which is like his where, where he's training now. Yeah, his, right. his adopted yeah. home. Yeah, yeah, his yeah. adopted home. Like, damn, they can't they can, they give him Milwaukee, but they can't give him his fucking real yeah. home. Yeah. Like, he, he used to train at Henzo's, like, up the block, yeah. around the block yep. from MSG. They don't yeah. care. His mom lives over in New York, right? Queens. Yeah, yeah he grew up in Astoria. Yeah, Astoria, yeah. Right. Yep. So what's, what else is going on with you, Shane? What are we uh, catching you in the I middle just, of? Dinner? I, uh, yeah, dinner. I had some chicken parm, so that was good. Ooh. But uh, I just booked a vacation, finally. Me and my, my wife and my daughter are going to go to Disney World on Monday. Oh, nice. okay. So you going to? You should have said that after you won. I'm going to Disney World. Yeah. yeah I, well, we didn't book it until just now, and I didn't uh, want to say it and look stupid if I ended up choosing somewhere else. <laughs> right, right. Well, you did. Well, it's a funny thing to say. Yeah. Like, what are you gonna do next? <laughs> Go to Disney World. Yep. I, I was. That was honestly thinking about saying it, but I was like, let me see yeah, if I can find it. Yeah. But if you don't, if you don't, your yeah. daughter would be up your shit. Like, Dad. Oh. She's she on YouTube. Knows, 
She, yeah, exactly. She sees the the Mickey Mouse pancakes at the hotel. She's like, Daddy, I want to go Mickey pancakes. Mickey uh, pancakes. I'm like, how old is your daughter? She's two and a half, a little over two and a half. She'll be three in February. Okay, awesome, man. Yep. And then you're married or you did it backwards like most of us? No, I did people. it completely the right way. I, okay. I, got, I, I met my girlfriend. Two years, we got engaged. Then a year later, we got married. Then a year later, we got pregnant. Then another year later, we had a kid. Wow. <laughs> yeah, no, crazy, right? Yeah, Shane Burgos is a rare breed for today's day and age. <laughs> uh. Especially, I know a lot of fighters, they do it in reverse. It's like, nah. Oh, of course, yeah. I mean, a oh. lot of people do it in reverse nowadays, yeah, but yeah. it is what it is, whatever. Yeah, understandable, though. Life uh, <laughs> life works out how it works out, you know? And run me exactly. through the, the haircut right now. We're growing out the mullet. What are we doing right now? Yeah, man, I got the... the little flare? Yeah, yeah, I got the back going and everything. I haven't cut, cut the top since last MSG. I had a little man bun last year i caught i shaved my head after uh, before the fight last last in madison square garden and i was like you know i'll just try to grow it out but i can't like the sides i hate when the sides are growing out yeah you look like a, you look like a bum for like a solid like eight months so i was like yeah. oh i can't do this so well the I move shave the sides. yeah the move is to wear a hat all the time it does that little cool exactly. like, flip yeah that's why you i kind of got the hat on now man because i'm not trying to brush my hair and do this shit yeah. while i'm at home yeah <laughs> you see where i'm going i'm going a little shane burgos yeah, I, see, I got the Shane Burgos exactly. going. Yep, yep. <laughs> Business in the front, party in the back. Exactly. Everyone calls it a mullet. It's technically not a mullet because the front is really long too. It just looks like the back is way longer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you, can, how do you style the back? You can't even fucking see what's going on back. No there. flare. I don't know. This I, is flare. I leave it. Yeah. And then hopefully by the next fight, maybe I can braid it. And then when you're training, will you just throw it back in a, in a ponytail, or how do you? No, it's not. Honestly, it's not even long enough. Like it stays back, but it's not even that that long. Like it's right here. Oh damn. Yeah, so it hasn't gotten on my face in training. Not yet. Because I remember when I had long hair, man, I'd be hitting mitts, and my coach would be like, yo, yeah. fucking, like, because, you know, when you're doing this, your, your hair's fucking, like. Yep. You ever sweat. hold mitts for someone, and they're, and they're sweating yeah. at you, and you're like, ah. Oh. Gets in your mouth. But do you miss the long hair? Um, no. Cause my no, hair, all right. Well, my hair isn't, like, my hair is, like, thin. Oh, mine, mine is thin too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It doesn't. Yeah, I, I wish, I wish it was thicker. But yeah, every time I had long hair twice, and both times I cut it, I instantly was like, "Fuck, why did I fucking cut?" It? Uh, well, for me, I <laughs> well, I started growing my like I had my firstborn. I was like, you know what? I'm not getting chicks anymore. I'll just grow my hair out. <laughs> and I started. It, it looked kind of cool there towards the end. Yeah, you know? I was pretty dope. It was the the, the braids going on too, right? I, yeah, I, I cornrowed it when I fought uh, Steven Seiler. Yep. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I was just. So, another question we like to ask Who's Shane Burgos' favorite fighter? Who's my favorite fighter? I mean, of all time or right now? Hmm. Eat both. Yeah, fuck it. Of all time, I'd say. Dennis Bermudez. <laughs> yeah, Dennis Bermudez. But besides him, my number two, I'd say. Um, honestly, I guess I was, I was a huge Crow Cop fan. So, it's either Crow Cop or hmm. like prime Nick Diaz. That's of all time. Okay. The last person that we asked that question said Nick Diaz as well. Really? Randa Marco said Nick Diaz. Huh. That's a great pick. Dude, that dude is fucking, he was nuts. He, was, he had some fucking amazing fights. His fight with Paul Daly, insane. Oh, yeah. You know what it is? Fucking For me, pick. I'm in, like, the aesthetics. He's not, like, a big jack yeah. or rip guy. No, not at all. <laughs> He's pale. He's a vegan. Yeah. He's a vegan. Yeah. So yeah, who's your fa who's your favorite fighter now to watch? Favorite fighter now to watch. Um, that's tough. Hang on, fighter? I'm gonna kind of help. Like that for me it was a tough question while I was fighting. It, like, is, it is tough. I don't care about anybody else. I'm like focus on this guy, or it's like one of your teammates. Oh, uh, I mean, yeah. I don't want to be generic. I have to pick one of my teammates. Right. When I watch when, when I watch my teammate fight, it's not even. I'm not even enjoying it. I'm having I'm having yeah. anxiety. I'm stressed yeah. out. Yeah. You know what I mean, but uh. <laughs> Cowboy, Cowboy's always been one of my favorites. Masvidal's been a, been a favorite for a while. He's always fun to watch. He never has a boring fight. Um, I'm trying to think who else we got. Heavyweight, light heavyweight. Uh, I, I, right now, probably, I'd say, I don't know if he's my number one, but he's definitely in the top three. Uh, style Bender. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's pretty dope. That dude, man, all of his fights fun in the UFC have been crazy. He's been getting so much better, too. He's so sharp and so crisp and... You can see, like, from, from his first fight to his last fight, the, the progression he's gotten in within a, not even two years. It's been insane. Yeah. And he's the only person I've ever heard be like, you know what? Yoel Romero. That's who I want next. 
Yeah, that's wild. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like they asked yeah. Darren Till, "Do you want to fight you?" He was like, "I'll fight Stylebender. I'll fight Costa." They were like, "What about you, Romero?" He was like, "Fuck that guy. Keep that guy away from me. <laughs> I'm good." I respect that dude. That dude is diesel. Yeah, and then Adesanya like though is like, Adesanya is like, that's who I want to defend my title against, Yoel Romero. Yep, if, if it's if it's not Costa, that's another motherfucker. That's Diesel. Oh yeah, he's got like the fucking Adonis physique. Yeah. Yeah. Well, him versus um, Yoel, Yoel versus Costa yeah. is like the Mister Olympia, but the MMA version. Yep. And both of them had fucking granite chins. None of them. Why that? Fall? Oh no, they did fight each other. What am I talking about? Sorry. Yeah. 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 They fought. It could have went either yeah. way, but I thought Costa yeah. won two to one, but very close fight. Super close, but yeah, I had the same thing I had for Costa, but super fuck close. Yeah, very close. And then Adesanya calling out Jones, kind of like, you'll get yours, wait, just let me clear out my division. Yep, yep. Now, He's that might be one of those on, things, kind of like Pacquiao Floyd, where like, because Adesanya is much younger than... No, Adesanya's 30. I thought he was younger, too. I thought he was like 25, 26, he's 30. Oh, so it could be, even if he cleared out his division, and I just think a couple years difference. yeah. I think Jones the only is thing 32. Is, that, is he? I believe so. Yeah, or 33. He's the same age as me, right, I think. Right. Yeah. yeah, so that's got to happen relatively quick. But on top of that, Jones is only getting bigger since he's getting older. Adesanya is still pretty for, – for a 205-er, Adesanya is really thin. So I think he had to put on some serious weight to, to, to go against Jones. Jones, to me, is like Yoel Romero, too. Like, I respect Dom Reyes and even Corey Anderson. Like, you want to fight that guy? Yeah. He, he parties and mails it in, and he's fucking people <laughs> up. You know what I mean? <laughs> Like, That's why do you want to fight that yeah. guy? Uh, yeah. God forbid he takes you seriously and then you're fucked. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I get that mindset, though. Where, like, well, if I lose, it's because I was being a fuck off. So, because oh, every, yeah. every, I, I remember speaking with my sports psychologist, like, a lot of, like, very competitive people or champions are some of the biggest people with excuses. And the reason why they have excuses is they. Back up they back. have control over that. Yeah. It's something, well, you know, because then if you accept losing, it's like, I'm not that good. You yes. Know, where if, like, you're like, well, I lost because it just so happened, like, my, you know, my sister's brother died and, like, I just wasn't there. It gives you something that, like, I can still be better. You know, it's not like yeah. that guy's better than me. Yeah, I get, I get that, I get it, but I don't get it at the same time. You know what I mean, like, I, I get that people can do that, but then at me, I'm like, fuck that. I'm not tr ever trying to fucking lose. I'm trying to do everything I can to make sure I have the the, the most advantages, not the, not trying to fucking right. sabotage myself. Yeah, but he still went. Well, the thing is, is like, the excuse is already there. It's already just yeah. Now you know you you've already lost. So just Crazy. fuck yeah. it. Fuck it. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So there's no. Maybe that's a way to take pressure off themselves. I think. Yes. Maybe. Yes. Right? The mental I, thing, right? Yeah. I had this kid I wrestled with in college. His name's Matt Moley, and like I wouldn't drink a beer if I didn't have if I had competition within two weeks. So like if we had a, you know a competition this weekend, I'm not drinking. He'd be drunk on Tuesday. We have a match on Saturday. I'm like what? And yeah, then he turned crazy. out to be a multiple time All American. I'm like dude, what the fuck? <laughs> like. I I don't get no. it. Well, we talked yeah, about yeah. that with Gregor and Ryan Lang. They would party before the national tournament. They'd be taking pills and fucking doing dumb shit. And then they'd go out and be all Americans. Because yeah, there's something maybe to that's, that. Not giving a fuck. Yeah. It, the, men, the mental thing, I think, it, it, that, that uh, it eases their mind. Like, if I lost, all right. If I lose, then all right. Then it's because I did that. I think yeah. it ha that's the one thing. I think of it. it has to be mental. And you know how uh, combat sports are so yeah. fucking mental. Shame, so mental. When Shane Burgess is getting ready to go in. He's, you know, in the tunnel. What, or maybe the week out, like, what is your frame of mind? Uh, I don't really try. I try not to think about the actual fight too much because it's fast in your mind, obviously, and try to keep myself as busy. But, right, yeah, during I mean, fight week. Yeah, fight week, I don't think yeah. about shit. I'm just like, ah, oh, exactly. you're fucking stupid and, like, whatever. But, like, exactly. when but you're heading out the, the tunnel, tunnel and you flip the switch, what is yeah. the... I'm just having fun. I'm, like, I, it... it all the work is done. I busted my ass. I have no excuses, especially my last couple fights. There were no injuries. I was like, whatever's gonna happen is gonna happen. Cause I'm not. I'm not. I did everything I, I had to do. There's not. There's no yeah. pressure because I. Yeah. If I lose, then that's what was meant to happen. But um, I'm going out there to, to kill, and I'm 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 fucking enjoying it, man. Like yeah. you see, like, my manager posted the video of me backstage right before I walked on the tunnel. I was just fucking loving it. Big smile on my face. I'm like, oh, I can't wait to go out just there. Just taking it all in. It. 
Exactly. I was right. Just, like you're absorbed. a performer. You're a performer. This is your concert. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I don't even think of myself that way. I think of it as like, I gotta kill this motherfucker. That's what I'm thinking. I gotta go out there and I gotta, I gotta finish him. I gotta kill him. Yeah. Well, even for the UFC, that's why I would be. If I was the UFC, I'd be in the Shane Burgos business, especially after the last fight. He's an entertainer when he's out there. Yeah. As serious as you are, you were like, you know, I'm obviously it was a home fight, so you were able to like play yeah. the crowd and whatnot. But yeah, because I know, I yeah. know when we had on um, Jeremy Stevens, he's like, yo, man, like this is for my kids. Yes. Like hundred percent. Like, like this is that's not. Exactly what I, yep. That you know that that could be like that could add pressure to yourself. He said, oh, 100%. he said one of the greatest 100%. lines, Jeremy Stevens. He was like, you know, dad's got to go bust the head. This is what we do. That's what he tells his kids before he leaves. <laughs> yep, I said it right before I walked out. I said, this is for my daughter. And I just walked right out. I was like, all right. My coach was like, for Avery. I'm like, all right, let's do this. Day of, Big dude. I get, like, religious. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Oh, yeah, well, I, I well, no, because the thing right is, is I say, like, you know, like, what's going to happen tonight is already predetermined. And that takes off yep. a lot of pressure. Oh, that 100%. I, that, that that right there is, like, is a game changer for me. Like, accepting the fact that, that my fate is already written. That's, yeah. I, I've been, I really accepted that. Like, God, God, God's plan for me wasn't just to come this far. I feel like, I feel like if it is, then okay, I can accept it. But I feel like he's got me and he put me, he brought me here to, to, to bring me up. Yeah. So, I, uh, I mean, through the years, a lot of things happened. Cause I remember like one time, like when I was undefeated at one point, I was just like, I remember I was going out to a fight and I just didn't feel good. And I was like, well, I'm going to win. Like, I didn't feel like really fighting. I'm like, I just, that's what I do. I'm just going to win. That's just, yeah. I remember going there and just winning. Like, I mean, it wasn't like a, like my best performance, but I just won. Cause that's all I knew how to I've... do. And just, you know, and then I remember being like, Religious, like, you know what? Whatever happens tonight, it's going to happen. And I would just go out there and just kind of like, almost 100%. like you're walking, like your last walk, like to the, the death chair. Yeah. Like, fuck it. Like, yep. <laughs> and I like would, you know, accept death on the way out there. Like, yeah. fuck it. I'm going to put my fucking chin down, go for the kill. And then I've tried to do like, oh, this is fun. I like this. This is like, <laughs> like I am performing, you know. Well, that was yeah. Ad- Adesanya. Before, he, I just was uh, watching Joe Rogan last night. He, Adesanya was on Joe Rogan. He said before the fifth round of him versus Kelvin, and you see him mouthed it if you go back and rewatch the fight. He's he, singing. No, he said, I'm ready to die. Uh. He like As he was getting ready to go out for the fifth round, he was like, I'm ready to die right now. And then he said, he was like, I accepted that. Like, I was that, going out to kill him or die. Dude, yeah, man, that's how, that's how you got to look at it. It's a fucking brutal sport. But, yeah, it's kill or be killed. That's why that's, I think of every every – Round as an individual fight. I got five minutes to go out there and kill this guy. If I don't do it, I get a little break, then I get another five minutes. If I don't do it that time, then I get a little break and I get another five minutes. But and if I don't get that finished, I'm not happy. But I have three separate fights to go out there and try to kill the guy. I don't. I, like that game I never focused on like hurting the guy, like putting him in the hospital. I just yeah, always no. focused on winning and beating him in every position. Because I do know yeah. motherfuckers that like I want this. To like it's stuck in your face, and when I pull it out, blood and like your spine goes flying. Yeah. No. Yeah. Let me let me reiterate that. I don't actually want to kill anyone. Like I, I I would feel terrible if I actually hurt somebody permanently. Like I always say a prayer before I, before I go out there to keep my me safe and to keep my opponent safe too. Because like I, I th- this is a fucking brutal sport. This guy's out there. He he's got a mom. He's got a dad that's watching. He's got some brothers and sisters, and maybe he has kids. Like I don't want to fucking ever hurt somebody permanently outside of the cage. But I got 15 minutes to go out there, and it's either you or me, and yeah, I'll be damned to me, right? Right. Now, maybe I'm fucked up in the head. Like, if I did kill someone, I'd be like, I killed a man. Not a big deal. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm, would, actually, would, I'm that yeah. badass. And, like, I think I'd sleep at night. But <laughs> the reason why I didn't, like, actually try to, like, hurt people is because that's an emotional, like, yeah. Yeah, feeling there, to yeah, want to yeah. hurt somebody. Which I've, I've, maybe I've done it where, like, it zaps you more. Yeah. It yes, takes energy 100%. out of you to put this emotion like I want to actually fucking hurt you, versus yep. like let me just score points and win. Yeah, hundred percent. That's that, that's so true. You gotta have that. You gotta find that balance. Like to, to to go out there and look for that finish, get that kill, but not force it. You force it, then you end up gassing yourself out and yeah. getting fucked up yourself. Yeah, we're like, yeah, you yeah. Know? Telegraphing everything, then you right. open, and you get right. Yep. Just almost like. <sighs> There's well, a fine line. Yeah, you can't. To go back to fine Usman line. versus Covington, I feel like that's going to be who wins that fight. Like We know Kobe's going to control his emotions. Can Usman yeah. control his emotions in that fight? 
And I think that's what Connor did very well on his reign was he would get people invo emotionally invested. Oh, yeah. So when they try to actually melt him, you know, like they're Alda. zapping their yeah. body by, you know. Yeah. yeah. And he would just shoot shit straight when they were swinging wild, loading exactly. up. Exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah. Aldo loaded up for that hook. He was he pulled that shit from behind his back and just left himself wide open. And Connor just slipped back and popped that left hand straight down the middle. Yeah. And then I Can't watched a little bit of Connor, Connor versus um, Eddie Alvarez today. I was just like, damn. Anytime Eddie fucking like rushed him, he's like, bang. Same thing. Yeah. 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 Quick with it. Yeah. Eddie too, though. I think he had Eddie worked up a little bit. Yeah, I agree. Emotional. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Eddie, Eddie's game plan was to wrestle, and he said after he got in there, he was like, I completely abandoned the game plan. I was just trying to kill him. Like you can't go, you can't fight Connor emotionally because he's such a good counter striker. And he's so good at striking, moving back, and finding those little holes that if you open up, he, he's gonna he's gonna find that little opening. Yeah. And then there's also something behind saying something all the time, and then really truly believing it. So Connor's yeah. talking this shit. Maybe he believes it off the jump. Maybe he's like, ah, oh, let me sell this. And I, you know, he keeps talking. And like, yeah, you know what? Actually, I am going to fuck it. He definitely believed it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, probably, honestly. Like, I bet you, like, Connor tried to walk on water one time and was like, ah, oh, I thought I'd be able to do this, too. <laughs> that you know? wouldn't shock me at all. Yeah. Like, when Khabib beat him, he was like, how did that ha Like, what happened? I don't get it. I just don't get it, you know? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Like, even when Nate beat him, he was like, I don't believe that that happened. We're running it right back. 155, 170 again, you know? He had I, th that, I thought uh, Nate won the rematch, honestly. I thought Nate won the rematch as well. I thought, the stats. Yeah, I thought Nate took three, four, and five. Now, is yeah, there remember, any uh, politics four. in that you feel ashamed where they're like, we have money on this if we can get the trio? And they still haven't done it, so I don't know. Yeah, I mean, but it's money it's, in the bank. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I, it wouldn't shock me. It wouldn't shock me. But uh, you know, but ha, I, like, who does, who decides that? Like the UFC doesn't appoint the I, judges. The commission I don't does. So I don't know. But like, yeah, there is mafia that's here that also talks to people in Italy too. Yeah, like, yeah. how do they make it work? When there's money, people fucking figure shit out. Actually, I, I guess yeah. I mean, you know, it was a fucking it. It was a close fight, so I don't. I don't know. Like, it, it wasn't like a, like a complete robbery and like that. So I can't. I can't say that. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put that much into it, but I don't fucking know. <laughs> and actually, no, I spoke wrong. I forget which round it was, but I, I believe Connor won the fourth round, very close. But I yeah, believe... that's I think I had I had Nate two, three, and five. Yeah, and I think Connor, I had one and four. Yeah, Nate Nate got dropped in the second round, but he. But aside from that getting dropped, I think he dominated in four four and a half minutes of that round. Yeah, he had that point in the second round where he was just overwhelming. Yeah, exactly. Connor almost just... finished at the end of the, uh, the second round too. Yeah. Well, we appreciate your time, Shane. You know what you did for oh, us? No we lost Lyman because Lyman had to go teach. So we should have went Lyman first and then Shane Burgos. But then we, we just went extra long with Shane Burgos, talked some fighting. <laughs> and what uh, Good time. do you drink at all? No, not really. I mean, I'll drink like for the next maybe like every other weekend. With my friends, every, like not very low key, but not a crazy drinker. Oh, all right. I we, am. we were putting together uh, December 13th is going to be Dennis Bermudez Day. Oh, yeah? Yeah, we were it's arranging. A, it's a real thing. It's a real in the, thing. In the town of Babylon. There's a day. There's a Dennis Bermuda's a day. And uh, we're going to uh, try and set up like a bar crawl where people can buy bracelets. And we're going to take all the the money. And we decided on the veterans uh, charity. Did we? I, well, I, I, we I, talked to Rich, I talked to Rich Schaefer yesterday. And he said veterans charity? Because they need a new roof. Oh. I, Where's that? Where's, where's this happening? In the town of Babylon. Right by the train uh, station, so you'd be able to hop on the train and take it right out if you wanted to come. I thought it was Toys for Tots. Yep, is what I thought. Okay, okay, yeah. Like it's, you got you just post the details. Let me know. Well, yeah, we're gonna put together flyers and such, and yeah. uh, you know all the logistics, and it will be awesome out yep. and about. And if we yeah, can ever get you awesome. out to Long Island, we'd like to sit you right in between us yeah. and do an, an episode of Menace and the Man with you. Like this, we could do that. We watch the fight. We could, we could do a, a fight fight podcast. Bingo! Ooh, we're, we're into fights. that. You know what we yeah. need to do? We're long overdue, and we talked about it before Menace got the job where we could have done it on a random day. Now we'd have to do it on a weekend. We need to come to Tiger Shulman's and do, like, a a group episode with you guys. That's cool. We could do that for sure. Yeah. 100%. Let us know. And get the captain on there. We want to talk to Tiger as well. He'll be down. Both of them. Are they both Tiger? No, one's Tiger. The other one's just Ron, but we call him Sheehan. Sheehan? Sheehan, yep. 
All right, so Shane Burgos, you're the man. Thank you for the time, and uh, Thank good, you guys. good luck in the negotiations, and we yes, hope sir. to give Thank you a nice you. deal. What are you trying to get? I'm trying to get millions. <laughs> we'll see what I'm getting. 40, 40? What, 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 what does he say? 50, 50? What does he say, Dr. Evil? One million. One million dollars. <laughs> there we go. We'll see. All right, bro. I'll keep you guys posted. Good luck. Have a good one, guys. Thank you. Take Peace. it easy, brother. Woo. We had a lot of things there. Yeah, well, that's, I figured that's where we were going to go with him because he's a big fight fan. So yeah, we t we covered a lot of uh, events. events, yeah, current events. Yeah. Um, but for Dennis Bermuda's Day, handsome, beautiful Rob had the idea to make it a uh, ugly, ugly sweater. Yeah. All right. What I looked up when I was looking at bar crawls, usually what they do is they sell bracelets and then they'll sell like a ticket for. A certain number, and then with that certain number, it gives you, like, a, a shirt or a hat or something with it. You know what I mean? Well, usually there's, like, a raffle at some point. Yeah. Yeah. I looked up some ideas of what you All can right. do. So, yeah, we'll get on so that. I need you to. But, yeah, Dennis Bermudez Day, December 13th. Yep. We're going to obviously keep going with this in the next few days, try to make it a nice bar crawl. But worst case, it'll be Dennis Bermudez Day in the town of Babylon, December 13th. Well, I'll be at a bar. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. We're throwing a party somewhere. Yep. So I'm sure so far in, it'll be like Monsoon, Mary Carol's, and then we'll just have to figure out some other logistics with other Babylon bars. But that shit should be popping. Yeah. So something we didn't really get into with Shane, the only thing I, w and then I wanted to say, it, and then I guess I forgot, was Nick Diaz might come back. Well, yeah. We he touched on it, but we didn't. Yeah, he wants to fight Jorge. I know, I said that. I know, but we didn't go too into detail on it. Like, what do uh, you think of that? Do you think he... Uh, it seems like... So 2020, we have two of the biggest stars ever in MMA. Conor McGregor and Nate Diaz, and Nick Diaz, and even Nate Diaz, all want to fight Jorge Masvidal. So who do you think gets that fight in 2020? I feel like they're not going to give it to Nick. They should, but they're not going to. Or Conor. I feel like they're. I feel like the UFC is gonna let this thing like run dry on them, and they're gonna have Jorge fight Usman Covington winner, which isn't the. Be I mean, it's, realistically, it's not the best fight for him. I agree. You know what I mean? That's the blueprint. It's the toughest fight for him. Both of those guys are gonna grind him out, crotch sniff, whatever you want to call it. They're gonna throw a two piece. And well, then take hang him on. Down. You know who else was gonna grind him out? Askren. Yeah. But they both have way better stand-up than Askren. So where Askren was like, I'm shooting at the bell because I don't want to stand up with this guy, Usman and Covington will be like, all right. Well, no, 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 no. He didn't shoot at the bell because he's – he shot the bell because that's like a natural instinct if you run out of wrestle from the level change to take you down. Yes. That's a natural instinct. Yes, but if you look at the other fight that he had against Robbie Lawler, he shot immediately on Robbie Lawler. Like as soon as the, the bell rang and they walked out, he shot right in. And then went for like a drag bar. Well, that's also like a, you know, throw you off. Walk straight up, you standing straight up, and then instantly level change. Because that, that's a very uncommon thing in fighting. Yeah. Usually there's like this feel out process with let's touch, let's set the strike up versus like just go for it. As a huge fight fan, I For do example, like in a wrestling match, like whistle blows and guys shoot on the whistle. It's kind of one of those. Yeah, but as a fight fan, I want to see the money fights. I want to see them do something with Masvidal right now. And they have the rematch with Nate Diaz, which I think he wins. No, I don't think the re Nate rematch is a real thing. Uh, actually, it does have it does have wings to potentially fly. Yeah, but apparently, well, last week he said no now, but last week Nate made it like he retired, said, I'm like, peace out, fight game. And then a couple of days ago he said, no, nah, I'll fight tonight. I'm good. I'm not retiring. Where'd you get that from? It's like, uh... <laughs> Were you, know? you, uh, were you high? smoking the devil's lettuce? And yeah. then were, you high when you, were you high when you wrote this? Mm. But And then Nick Diaz did an interview with Helwani, and he was like, Dana White, it's on you. I'm back in 2020 if you want me. It's on you. And then he was like, you, did you see any of the clips of it? No, I don't want any. I don't watch Wani. I only watch the mess. Or any show. highlights? Oh, of course, but I watch everything. But then he said, he's like, you don't talk about... Remember how I said the only negative things said between them were... Nate said that the, whatever the fight was stopped too early and that he still wanted to fight or whatever. And then Jorge said, I didn't baptize him. So right. I want to run this back. Nick, right. Nick was like, you don't talk about baptizing my little brother. 
That's where he pissed Nick Diaz off. Okay. That's my and he was like, "That's my baby brother. Nobody's baptizing him. You don't talk about baptizing my little brother." So I want, and he was pretty much like, "So I want to fight your fucking ass." <laughs> so I think if and they UFC flirted with that fight, I believe earlier this year maybe or last year, and they put out like a poster and whatnot, like that that was going to be one of the fights. Hmm. Nate Diaz, Nick Diaz versus Jorge Masvidal. I think they pull the trigger on that, or they pull the trigger on Conor versus Jorge. And Connor hasn't fought in a minute. Nick hasn't fought in a minute. The worst thing you're doing there is giving one of those guys a loss and building up Jorge Masvidal. Right. Or one of those guys win, and then you build them into a superstar. You, know what, you know what builds even more superstardom is like Masvidal, and you get the most out of it. Masvidal fights Nate again, wins, and then like no one beats up my brother. Um, now you got to try and beat me. Fights him, like that's a big build up right there. Yeah, even the, yeah that that would build it up even more. Right, but then they have it right now. That Nick Diaz was like, I want to do I'm I don't do interviews, but I want to do an interview. He had AJ Agarzam contact Helwani, and they put it together to where he went in and sat down with them and was like, you know, oh in New York, in New York. Wow, it's funny because if you read like the comments, because obviously I like reading comments on shit. People yeah. were saying like. Uh, there's a drinking game in this interview. Every time he says, you know, like, you know what I mean? He just kept saying like, well, you know what I mean? And like pretty much made no sense. Like you have to like watch the interview like three or four times to make sense of what Nick Diaz was saying. Huh? Yeah. He was all over the place, but the, well, I'm sure he came on pretty emotionally. Yeah. The gist of it was he wants to fight Jorge Masvidal. He said 2020 he's back. Wants to fight Jorge Masvidal. I don't even think he said another name. He just said Jorge Masvidal. And then there's a funny thing, like people were saying, because there was definitely some edits in it, but at one point he starts talking about everybody being on steroids, and then it like cuts to a completely different conversation. He definitely went on a rant with, and was like, you know, started probably naming names and talking mad shit. Damn. Yeah. But so, what does Stan the Man want to see out of all these fights? I would love to see. Like I said, I want to see. So Kobe and Usman are already. It's going down. Who do you want to see Connor fight? Perfect world. This is what I want to happen. This is what would happen in my like perfect fight world. Uh, let's see, Stan. Conor McGregor or Nick Diaz fight Jorge Masvidal. I don't think either one of them win that fight, even though I would like to see Nick win that fight. I don't think either one of them win that fight. So Conor McGregor or Nick Diaz fight Jorge. If Jorge wins and Covington wins, then they do that fight. Mm. If Jorge beats either one of them, he fights the other one he didn't fight. Or he fights Nate again, you know, something like that. I feel like they should keep the BMF belt going. I mean, I know Jorge said he wants a title shot or wants the 170-pound belt. That's a tough fight for him either way. I mean, there's no easy fights for him at this point. But Right. Go yeah, for- they're all tough fights. Yeah, I want the money fight. I want to see Connor. Connor use his stardom and build up another guy. Or Connor fucking land that left hand and walk on, make it like he could walk on water again. Khabib said... That Connor needs to win 10 fights in a row. Yeah, I saw that. Which isn't even possible. That's yeah. not going to happen. So he's pretty much saying, like, I will never agree to fight you unless the UFC, I guess, forces his hand. But um, I, I wouldn't mind seeing Usman, Covington fight a war and maybe Covington win. And then <clears throat> I think Masvidal versus Covington's a really good fight. Fan-wise, like selling-wise, entertainment-wise, I feel like Usman versus Masvidal is not as entertaining as of a buildup. And maybe not even as entertaining of a fight. Like, I think Usman could easily five-round him. Well, I mean, there's, you know, there, there, there is footage of Kobe following Usman around. And, you know, their manager's almost getting fights. And, you know, Kobe coming to Usman's, uh, like... There's a fight. Fight warm ups. I mean, they, yeah. they got they've got footage they got, they to have, promote this. And oh, yeah. It. They have a fight in the buffet line of them, like, swinging yes. at each other. Yes. Yeah. Which is, you know, more banter. You gave Colby ammunition. Colby's like, you claimed like you were hurt. You jumped out of your wheelchair to try to fight me in the buffet line. Yeah. You and your sleazebag manager. (laughs) Yeah, they got a lot of shit to sell there. But So another thing I saw the UFC announced. So Cyborg has her first fight. It's not Kat Zingano. She's going to fight Julia Budd. She's the Bellator 145-pound champion. Okay. So UFC is going to counter that programming. Who knows what fight they're going to put on it, but I'm sure something big, January 25th. So that should be a good one. 
There's a UFC this weekend. We'll do a couple of quick picks on that, and then we'll try to wrap this thing up. Okay. But, yeah, I'd like to see a money fight for Masvidal. I'm glad that the BMF belt, so Conor McGregor said, that's my belt, pretty much. And then Nate Diaz said, uh, Nick Diaz said, I know Nate just fought for the belt, but that's my fucking belt. So they both think that Jorge's belt is their belt. So one of those two is who Jorge has to fight next. I think. I don't care about weight classes. Connor doesn't care about the weight class. I don't think Nick cares about the weight class. And like we talked about last show, I think they could do the BMF belt at whatever weight they want. So. Oh, Bobby Green's fighting this fight. Yeah. Hannon Barrow's fighting another Brazilian Where dude. Where they got him on the card? Who? Barrow. Uh, Barrow? Third like fight. A, third fight of the prelims. He went from. You have, what weight class is he at now? He's moving up to featherweight. He, well, he's been fighting at featherweight a little bit now. Yeah, he moved up, I believe. But yeah, he went from. Ready to bat, Brown's fighting, the homie. He went from undefeated for years to third fight on the prelims. Yikes. Did he win? No, he won his. No, he lost his last one versus Luke Sanders. And I believe he's. Yeah, was that at 45 or that was at 35? Mm hmm. Nope, that was a catch weight because Barrow missed weight. Oh, no, that was that one. Oh, yeah, so Barrow's missed weight his last two fights. At 135? At 135, yeah. Okay, so he's coming back up to 145. <clears throat> yeah, so he went up to 45. <clears throat> Lost to Jeremy Stevens. Beat Felipe Nova. Fought Aljamain at a catch weight. Kelleher at 35. Missed weight. And then missed weight. So this man loses again. He might be cut. He's lost four in a row. He might be hanging out with Diego. Bro, he's lost. He was thirty-two and one at one point. Now he's thirty-four and eight. So he's been one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He's. Two. Do you think Usada has anything to do with this? Possibly. I think that might be the case with Jose Aldo as well. I think that that gym has notoriously been rumored to be involved in that game. What game? The steroid game. Juicing. Yeah, you can get, like, steroids in Brazil at, like, CVS. Yeah. Like, at the age of eight. Yeah, so they've been doing it since they were eight? Is that what you're trying to say? Possibly. But, yeah, Randy Brown is fighting Warley Alves. Warley Alves is the guy who, the only man to beat Colby Covington. And that's a tough fight for Randy Brown. Obviously, I'm going to lean towards him, but... Yeah, I'm going to go Randy. This dude's tough. He has a loss to... uh, Brian Barberina, Usman, and James Krause. So I think Randy could beat James Krause and Barberina. So I'll go with Randy on that one. Yep. Then we have... We don't really care about the... Then we got Bobby Green fighting Francis, Francisco Trinaldo. I gotta go with Bobby Green. Of course. He's the homie. Yeah, tough fight for him. Yes. That Especially guy is, on the comeback. Yeah, that guy is... I feel like he's hard to knock out. Um... Yeah, I don't even think he's ever been knocked out. He's been rear naked choked. Yeah, he's only been submitted. He's never been knocked out. So. Yeah, and that's Bobby's, like, Bobby could jam. decision him or maybe catch him. You know, he's always live in fights. Okay. Maybe he's re rejuvenated. What else we got? James Krause versus Sergio Marias. I like Krause. I'll go with Krause. But Marias is Sergio. He's, he's tough, too. Then they have some unknown Brazilians in the early fights, and then the feature fight is Charles Oliveira versus Jared Gordon. Tough fight for Jared Gordon. Big step up. He wins this one. He's in the top 15. I believe they have Oliveira at like 12 or 13 right now. So I'm going to go with my heart on that one. I'm going to go with Jared Gordon. Yeah, I think uh, Jared can – because Oliveira will gas a little bit. Yeah. I think that fight, if he watches his teammate and friend Paul Felder's fight with Oliveira, that's all you got to do. Yeah. Take him in late into the, the deep second. Water. Take him into the late into the second round, and then just keep the pressure up. Yep. Paul Craig, do you know who Paul Craig is? Uh, if I saw him, maybe he's filling in for Sam Alvey. Okay, that's right. Yeah, so he's getting that Shogun fight. He has a couple of KO losses, a couple of first round KO losses, so that leads me to think maybe Shogun might catch him. Well, I thought... And Shogun's been on a bit of a roll lately. Who did Shogun fight last that I thought was going to beat Shogun? Tyson Pedro? Yep. 
Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, he got knocked out by Anthony Smith, but then before that he had beaten. Yeah, but Anthony Smith is a beast. Yeah, but I'm oh beast, and then I'm saying before that he was on a winning streak. He had yeah. beaten. I'm gonna go Shogun, man. I think he's like again, like remember we talked about giving no fucks. Yeah, no. I fucks. think he's just like, I am old man. I am supposed to lose. I don't care. Yeah, like someone's getting knocked out now. Yeah. I'm gonna go Shogun as well. Then the main event is Jan Blahovic versus Jacare Souza. I got, I got that. Was he Russian, right? Yeah, this is the dude who knocked out. He's actually been on a roll other than yeah. he got knocked out by Tiago Santos. And then his last fight, he knocked out Luke Rockhold. I'm going to go Jan Blahovic. Yep. He got beat by Pat Cummins. He lost to Gustafsson, Corey Anderson, all decisions. Tiago Santos is the only one to TKO. No, he beat Pat Cummings. No, he lost to Pat Cummings. Oh, he did? Yeah. So, yeah, I think I'm going to go Jan Blahovic as well. Jacare is up there, 39. So, and last fight, I mean, he's he claimed that last fight he was a little fatigued and whatnot from the weight cut, but he lost to Jack Hermanson. Right. So, yeah, I think I'll go Jan Blahovic on that one as well. All right, shake and bake. Yeah. Good episode. I feel like we got right to the point with a lot of things. Yeah, episode. we tried. I'm sure we forgot things, but we'll figure it all out for the next week's episode. Yeah, we will. Yeah, so hit him with your... Uh... Oh, wait. One more will go. Menace Bermuda's Day, December 13th. Keep a lookout. We'll post some shit in the next couple of days ne- by next week. And who else has a day named after them? Ryan LaFlair. Well, any, uh, does Chris Wade have a day? I don't know. I, I know Nick Piccinini does. I was going to say, I know he gave a lot of wrestlers their day, too. Yeah. Their birthdays and whatnot. Yeah. So December 13th. Dennis Bermuda's Day, Town of Babylon. Keep a lookout for some updates on it. Yep. And you can come hang out with Menace. Menace will leg kick you, punch you with a body shot. Or stand. No. You guys what? can come you guys can come don't out. I owe, don't, don't I owe you something? Didn't somebody I owe you one for somebody. I don't know about that. Yeah. Re re listen to the last it's within the, within the last four episodes for sure. And I think you gave me that. No. Yeah, I think you did. No. All right, well, I'll have to look back on it. All right, let me or know. one of the fans out there, go find the episode, and they'll just make something up, I'm sure. <laughs> All right, so Menace and the Man, episode 55? Yep. Well, see you later.